In today's video, we're going to talk about making the most from an over-photographed scene. Welcome back to the channel, this is Dylan Goldby, and in this week's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about going to a location that has been photographed a lot, possibly even over photographed, and what we can do to make sure we come home with not only that postcard shot, but a few unique images as well. So earlier this week, my good friend Roy Cruz, who you will know from, uh, he pops up in this channel every now and again, we talk about various things photography related. Uh, he and I had been watching the weather for a place called Dodam Sambong in South Korea because for several years I've sort of been waiting for the right conditions to go down there and get a shot that I had in mind, kind of the way that I see the place and that sort of mystical way that I wanted to photograph it. And so it was last Saturday night, I believe, I was checking the weather and it seemed like they were absolutely going to get dumped with snow down there. So I gave Roy a quick call, we booked some trains and we met up 12 hours later uh, down in Danyang, which is where Dodam Sambong is, and went out to photograph the, the three peaks. So while we were down there, we shot two different locations at two different times of day in two different weather conditions, and so that will form the basis of what we're talking about here, which is how to get the most from a single location that has been photographed a lot. Let's you, get on with it, shall are we? Are you done, Mr. Drone? He might be. I think he just fell out of the sky. Like, he well just stopped. Is that him? Could be. I think we just lost one of our noise sources. Hi everybody, this is Dylan Golby. Hey guys, Roy here from Roy Cruz Photo. We are out at a place called Dodam Sambong, or the Three Peaks of Dodam, uh, in Danyang in South Korea. And it's a place we've been wanting to come for quite a while. Yeah. Actually, we did come. You want to talk about that? Yeah, we yeah. came here around last year, exactly a year ago. The shoot was kind of a bust. Um, this is what we were hoping for. This, <laughs> on the other hand, is not a bust. It's the opposite, exact opposite of a bust. It's a beautiful, beautiful day today, and uh, we're really happy uh, with the conditions we have, and so it's absolutely epic, absolutely gorgeous. Man. Yeah. So we'd actually planned to uh, be filming this as the sun came up this morning, but things were changing really quickly and they were really beautiful, so we took the time to actually shoot yeah. everything that we want to talk about today, yeah. and then we'll sort of go through a few of these in post-production uh, with you guys later on, right. and uh, hopefully just you know give you a few tips and bits and pieces while we're here. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what are we going to talk about today? So, we're going to talk about, this is a pretty well-known location. This is sort of like your, you know, like the, you know, the Eiffel Tower or the, the Palace in Seoul or something like that. This is one of those sort of, there's only one thing here and everybody comes to photograph it. So, we want to talk a little bit about how you can explore that a little more, how you can make the most of a simple scene and try and get as much, I guess, different work out of it as possible. Okay. Is that Sound like what you're hoping sounds to talk exactly, about? Sounds exactly right. And so, um, so we came up with some, uh, some goals for this particular shoot. Uh, we've decided to narrow it down to try to make 10, 10. 10 good and unique images from this one location. Uh, I mean, just this morning, we, there were a bunch of photographers uh, who pretty much lined up here. They took their shots of that and then left. And uh, Dylan and I were, you know, of course, left exploring other compositions. So I guess the point and what we want you to get out of this is um, really how to maximize, mm. you know, a single location and, and do more than the trophy shot. Right. And especially of a scene that's been photographed so often. I mean, there were 10, maybe 12 people here yeah. this morning. People have been coming in and out all morning, just taking that same shot and then leaving again. Yeah. And so it gets shot to death it's on Instagram it's on Facebook it's everywhere you look but we're trying to get something a little bit unique out of it exactly so. and uh, that's that's kind of the goal you don't you don't need to make you know another postcard image it's nice to have and we shot it sure we shot it for sure you get that hero image but you put your own twist on it you add uh, you know you add your own spin and make a hopefully make a unique image that uh, you know maybe hasn't been seen before right What are you shooting with today? Uh, so I've got, I've actually got one of them in my pocket right here. I've got my X100V, um, which has been great to just be able to shoot while we've been walking along snowy paths and yep. things like that. Get a few quick, uh, almost snapshot style images. Yep. And in my bag, I have the GFX50R with the 45 to 100 F4, which gives me a lot of 
variety without having to change uh, lenses while the snow is falling. Right. right. So medium format kit and a medium format kit, nice and run a, and gun kit. Yeah. So what I have, I'm shooting with the Fujifilm XT4, the 16 millimeter f 2.8, uh, the XF 27 millimeter f 2.8, the 50 f 2, um, and a manual lens that you may have seen in one of my previous videos, the Pentax Asai Pentax 135 uh, millimeter. Um, M42 lens. So I'm more of a run and gun, uh, you know, I've got a, a run and gun kit, very light. Mm -hmm. I'm shooting on a small tripod. And uh, yeah, um, that's that's my kit. Yeah. And I also have, we're actually filming on it right now, I have my big Manfrotto tripod with me um, to be able to support the GFX. Now, it's fine at this time to shoot handheld, especially with the uh, 45 to 100 millimeter being a, a stabilized lens. But this morning when we were doing shutters of, you know, a second or two seconds or something like that, I did need to have the tripod just to make sure that I could, uh, you know, get sharp images with the GFX as well. All right. So as Dylan and I like to do, we like to uh, split our videos between both channels and take a, a slightly different angle uh, and tackle a slightly different uh, topic. Um, yeah, and so from from here, basically, we're going to go into some tips um, from my perspective, like what I shot, and then some tips from what Roy shot, and we'll try and give you sort of as many uh, you know actionable little bits and pieces um, that we've come up with as we were shooting this scene this morning. So while we were down there, we went out to the peaks two separate times and shot two different sort of mini locations there. So let's take a look at the first one of those in the snow now. All right, so here we are at the first part or the first area of the scene that we're going to be able to to work from and this is basically you can see a, a frozen river covered in snow behind me and we're able to move along basically the riverside here i don't think the ice is thick enough for us to get out there and, and uh you know risk falling into the river and i don't think we'd get any better shots by doing that so we'll definitely stay up on this area so basically what's going to I guess be of most use to us here is being able to move our location physically, our relationship to those uh, the three peaks in the background and the and the mountains are, uh, surrounding them will change the way they appear in the frame. So we can use one to cover up another, or we can show more of the pagoda that's up on the second uh, the second rock, or less of that pagoda. We can also go up. There's a parking area just above this, so we can get a little bit of a higher vantage, and we can include some of the mountains behind or not include those. So it should be really interesting to see what we can get by moving back and forth. So I'm going to pick up the cameras and start shooting this as the snow is really coming down now. So I will see you guys back in the editing suite. So here's the first image that I would like to talk about. Now, as somebody who grew up in a country where we don't really see a lot of snow, and even if we do, it doesn't last very long, Seeing snow is sort of a, a still an exciting kind of thing for me, uh, even though I've been you know, living in Korea for about 15 years now and I've seen quite a lot of snow. Uh, it's still every time just it transforms the world and I get to see things in a, in a bit of a different way. So that was the first reason that I really wanted to, to get down here. And the other reason is that I've always loved the style of art that you can find in East Asia. In Korea, we call it sumukwa. Uh, it's a typically a, a large oftentimes vertical um, white sheet of paper with very simple black ink strokes on it. And so you'll see things like mountains, trees, birds, temples, painted very, very simply with black ink on a huge white canvas. It tends to be pretty minimal, fairly high contrast. And so that was sort of in the back of my head uh, as, I was, as I was going to this scene, that I knew that, you know, the black rocks uh, as juxtaposed to the white snow would probably give that sort of feeling and if visibility was low enough that I'd be able to obscure the town behind these peaks and hopefully be able to uh, get something that represented at least in a little way, in a little way uh, that sort of artwork. So that was what I first wanted to, to capture when I arrived. So the moment we jumped out of the car I grabbed the GFX with the 45 to 100, and this is absolutely as wide as I can go with the 45 millimeter, which is about 23 on Fujifilm X and about 35 millimeters on full frame. And so I got in as much of the scene as I possibly could and instantly switched to the 65 by 24 crop mode because there's very little in the foreground that's of interest and very little in the sky that's of interest. It was just white and white in both directions. And of course, below here, there are a few things like the uh, the tourist boat that takes people out to the, the peaks when the water is actually flowing. And of course, in the sky, there's just white clouds. 
So I grabbed my first shot and we had the, the beautiful snow um, blowing through here that was kind of obscuring the bottom half of the image, which to me basically gave me a one-click solution to what I'd hoped to get when I first arrived. So that was my first scene. I had that out of the way and now it was time for me to actually start exploring other options. So there's my first sort of tip, I guess, when you arrive at a location. Get that classic shot if you can, get it right away, get it out of your system and start working on other compositions. So it was only a few minutes later as I was moving my camera to try and get a slightly different angle of, uh, of these three peaks, that the sun started to peek through the clouds and we started to get a little bit of color in the sky. So my second image ended up being a very subtly toned panorama of the scene. I couldn't get wide enough with my 45 millimeter lens to actually include these mountains on this side, the mountains on this side, and of course the fact that just the center section of the sky was turning orange. So I couldn't really frame that with the 45 millimeter focal length. So I zoomed in a little bit, turned the camera panoramic, uh, turned the camera vertical, sorry, and made a panoramic shot. And I believe this is actually 12 images stitched together at 55 millimeters. So again, the snow was still blowing through here, giving us this beautiful sort of uh, washed out look to the mountains behind. And in post-production, I just added a little bit of contrast to these to allow us to, uh, to see the, the peaks a little bit easier and to, to make them the focus of the image. But so what I was trying to capture here is that beautiful play of color between the, the subtle uh, sunrise in the sky and that blue uh, pre-dawn light that was still covering the snow. The choice of the panorama here was just because I really wanted to get the whole scene in and be very minimal with it. If I just photographed the peaks here, you wouldn't really get to see this, this beautiful light in the sky and you wouldn't get the sense that the snow was blowing through, sort of obscuring the, the whole world there. So a few moments later, the sun got a lot stronger than it is in this image. And if anyone has sort of seen snowy scenes before, you'll note that snow typically takes on the color of the sky. It sort of gets reflected and things start to become almost a, a monotone. So if you have a blue sky, snow tends to render a bit blue. If you have a sunrise uh, with some colors in it, snow tends to render a little bit more pink and orange. And so with the blowing snow coming through the scene and the complete wash of snow on the ground, the moment that sky started to take on the color, everything on the ground illuminated as well and we got yet another different shot. So I moved a little bit to the right in order to separate the three peaks and also to be able to include this boat here as I was standing a little bit further back in the previous image and there was a little bit of grass that was sort of obscuring this boat. So I moved a little forward and a little to the right in order to try and capture this and I made another panoramic set using the full orange sky here and letting everything render nice and warm. So to recap these first three images, what I did to try and make something different. With the first image, I immediately played to what I had in my head and what I wanted out of the scene to make sure that I could get that out of my system and that I'd be able to focus on other things. So I immediately captured this black and white image, which was basically what I had in mind when I arrived and got rid of that. Then as the sun began to rise, I took my cue to go a little bit wider and make sure that I could get the full orange sky along with the blowing snow in this as well. And of course, switch back to, to color. For the third image, I went down the stairs closer to the river, which got all of the grasses and the tourist boat and everything out of my composition. But it also allowed me to put the peaks up in the sky and capture the reflection of the sun hitting the snow down here as well. So three different images over the course of about 10 rushed minutes. So it was then that the sunrise started to peter off a little bit and we lost those strong colors so I could get back that contrast between the sky and the, the ground again, the color contrast. And I decided that, okay, I've shot the three peaks and I've shot them from three different angles. That's sort of the, the classic thing. It's called Dodam Sambong, which is three peaks of Dodam. And so I got all three, I have my shot. From there, I decided to experiment with cropping in a little bit, moving my camera so I didn't necessarily have to have all three peaks. I decided it'd be more interesting to focus on, say, the pagoda here and this leading line of the mountain coming down. 
So there's my fourth shot. And it's a little bit different. It doesn't necessarily capture the fact that there are three peaks, but it doesn't have to. There's no rule that says you have to capture the entire Eiffel Tower. There is no rule that says you can't zoom in and get pieces of, say, the Statue of Liberty. You're able to compose in a way that makes an interesting image. It doesn't necessarily have to represent the scene. And that's what I was going for here. So as you can see, the snow had started to come down pretty hard, and that was my cue to start making, again, a different set of compositions and playing with a different set of techniques to be able to create unique images. So in this first scene, I actually have a series here that I'd like to show you, and what I've done is I've used my aperture to limit the amount of light coming in. And by doing that, I'm able to get longer or shorter shutter speeds that can show the scene in a bit of a different way. So I'll put these full screen for you so that you can actually see, and we'll talk through them. So this first image is shot at f11 at a 250th of a second. And that basically freezes the snowflakes as they're falling down. And you get this very dramatic sort of, the sense that there is a lot of snow falling. So in this next shot, where I dialed my aperture to f14, you can see that a few of the snowflakes have started to basically render as a bit of a stripe, a bit of a blur, because of my shutter speed of 170th of a second. It's not too obvious when you get over to the pagoda itself, because they are quite far away from the camera, and so they still render very similarly to the previous shot, but if you look at the ones, say, under the pagoda or on the left-hand side of the peak, you can actually see the ones closer to the camera becoming stripes. In this third frame, I dialed my aperture to f20, and that gives me an 85th of a second, which, if you can see, even the far away uh, snowflakes now have started to render as stripes. This gives the sense that they're in motion. It gives the sense that it's quite a violent storm. And you can see the ones closer are almost gone now, because they're so close to the camera that they've moved through the frame, and really all they're doing is affecting contrast now. They're not really visible uh, in and of themselves. In this final frame, at f29, which gave me 1 40th of a second, you can see that the snowflakes themselves have just become stripes of white. You almost get this sort of charcoal picture type of feeling to it. It's almost like an artist has sort of taken a piece of charcoal and just wistfully sort of drawn in black stripes. So there you have it, four different images just by changing your aperture setting, which will give you a longer or shorter shutter speed. Now you could do this with you know, a rainstorm, you can do this with wind blowing trees, you could even add in say an ND filter to get an extremely long shutter speed and be able to almost completely remove the snow from this scene. So for this next set of images, I noticed that the wind was blowing the snow again, which really obscured the village behind and really simplified the, the foreground elements. So I moved again about 30 meters to the left over near where the, the tourist boat was parked, and I decided to go for a vertical, very, very simple composition. The mountains in the background were completely obscured by snow. The village was almost obscured by snow. And so I was able to just get the peaks with that pure white background, which is very much related to the sumukwa, the, the Asian style of painting that I was talking about before, and I wanted to make sure I got a few images of that. So again, I ran through different shutter speeds to be able to blur the snow in different amounts, and at this size, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, even if I flip through them now for you, you won't really see a difference here. You might see that there's some falling snowflakes here and there, but you won't really see a difference. Once it's printed quite large, however, it does look really impressive when you have each of the individual snowflakes uh, visible. So again, this is a case of moving the camera, framing different things out, reacting to the weather conditions, and then changing my orientation, going vertical and realizing that it's okay to have absolutely nothing in the frame except what I want to show. For the final image from this set, I want to show something that I often do when I'm working on something like a travel editorial. Travel magazines like to print something that shows the experience that people can have if they visit a location. And one of the things that tourists love to do in snow here is to buy a colorful umbrella and stand out in the middle of nothing and have their photograph made. And so I saw this as I was making one of my other frames and I thought, perfect. That is the kind of shot that shows what people do in this location. It's the kind of thing that you could put into a travel magazine and people will want to go and recreate that experience.
For the next set of images, I changed my location completely and climbed up this little hill here to stand in this pagoda. So let's roll some video from up there. Okay. So we've made it up to our second micro location within this sort of greater location of Dodam Sambong in Danyang, South Korea. And it took a little bit of a hike to get up here, put some spikes on the shoes, and we're standing on top of this sort of rocky mountain. And there's not a lot of space up here, so there's not really the ability to sort of move around and recompose the rocks and put them in you know, different positions in your frame or anything like that. It's more about being able to use different focal lengths uh, and the sort of you know, the background that we have being so simplified by the snow to be able to go a little bit minimal, um, but also to frame it in with things like, you know, the branches of the trees coming through, maybe using some depth of field here. So those are the things that I've been exploring here, and I'll show you a few of those photos now. This first set of images were made during the climb up to this peak. It's a very short climb, but I didn't want to have the GFX and the 45 to 100 in my hands because it was quite a slippery climb and they're possibly the most expensive things I own, so I didn't want to lose them on the way up. However, I did have my X100V in my pocket, ready to shoot just in case there was anything interesting. So these first couple of images are almost like snapshots of the scene. I took them as I was climbing, framed the, uh, the peaks in the trees, and I made a quick horizontal and a quick vertical shot. Changing the camera that you're working with, changing the focal length that you're working with, changing the film simulation or the color profile in the camera, in which case here I was actually shooting with classic negative, and also changing the aspect ratio. So the GFX is a 3x4 ratio, although I often shoot it with the 65x24 ratio. It is 3x4 and it's native ratio. The X100V is 2x3, so it gives you a slightly thinner frame. And so that gives you different constraints to compose with. So I often recommend if you know, you're struggling to make some different images of a scene, change your aspect ratio, change your focal length, change the, the way, if you're using a mirrorless camera, change the way it renders the colors, or just switch it into black and white. You'll start to see different things in the scene and it might just get those creative juices flowing again. One final image on the way up, which we thought was kind of cool at the time and seems a bit cheesy now, was to actually shake a tree to get some snowfall because we didn't have any snow. Um, but it did make quite an interesting image out of a very simple scene. So once we were up on top of this peak, there wasn't really a lot of room to move. It's only a few square meters at the best of times, but on this day it was covered in snow, so we really couldn't see what was under that and didn't want to risk falling off the mountain. So we decided to pretty much stay stationary and work with things like changing our focal lengths, using some foreground, uh, using different apertures, raising and lowering the camera, rather than being able to move back and forth and be able to compose the peaks in different ways. So for this first shot with the GFX, I decided to go as simple as I possibly could. So I switched into 16 by nine ratio to cut out some, we had some, some more grasses and trees and things in the foreground here, but I decided to go as simple as I could, crop those out, and crop the tops off these mountains here because the sky wasn't particularly interesting and I felt like it didn't really add much to the scene. So this is that sort of representative of the scene, shows you what's there type of shot. From there, I decided to move just a little bit to the right as far as I could and then zoom in. So that's where we get something like this. So zooming all the way out to 90 millimeters, which would be, I guess, around 45 to 50 on your uh, Fujifilm X series cameras, or they're around about 70, 75 on a full frame camera. So zooming out to that allowed me to, first of all, get some shallow depth of field so I could blow these trees on the, on the right hand side, but also to just simplify down to the pagoda and two of the peaks again. So again, cropping out that third peak because it didn't really add much to this composition. While I was doing that, I quickly changed my focus over to the trees in the foreground and got a slightly blurry uh, image like this. So this is something that you could use for, I don't know, the opening page in a book where you could put a title over the top and then flip to this is your second page or something like that. Those two things allow you to very quickly get two different shots out of a scene. So by shooting this lens at f4, which is f2 on a Fujifilm X, f2.8 on a full frame, allows me to get 
very shallow depth of field and play with my focus a little bit here to create different images. So for my final couple of tips, I would like to suggest that firstly, if possible, try to visit a location multiple times, whether that be at multiple times of day, multiple different days, or just as the weather changes. When you see things like sunrise, sunset, a storm, these sorts of things change really rapidly and give you a lot of different images that you can make during one single session. So for example, on this visit, we actually went the day before to do a little bit of scouting and see where we might be able to find some compositions. And we were given a completely different scene from the one that you've seen in this video. That scene was a frozen river that was reflecting the blue sky and gave us really sharp color contrasts, which we just didn't get the next day. So definitely try and visit more than once. Secondly, I suggest that you shoot more than just that particular thing that you've come to photograph. So I'll run a few images at the end of this video just to show you what I mean by this, but there were other pagodas on the hill, there were boats frozen in the river, there were tourists around. So all of those things you can use to create some different images rather than just the obvious ones. And my final tip, of course, is that you go and visit Roy Cruz's YouTube channel and check out his video on this because I'm sure he's got some really interesting things to say as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks again.